Our goal this evening is to give you an overview about the high school. And um, it's gonna be sort of a, a high level overview of what you, your child can expect in the high school, what you can expect in terms of supports from the guidance department. And then I just wanna let everyone know that we will be getting back together in the fall and early September to continue the conversation. This isn't the end of the introduction to the high school and all of us are here at any point from now on through your child's experience to answer any questions that you have um, and any concerns. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with our presentation and we are happy to take questions. Um, you can put some in the chat as we go. We'll see, I might, I'll probably monitor the chat and then we'll definitely have time at the end where Mr. Kind and I will be available to answer questions as well. Again, this is not your last chance to ask questions. You are gonna be meeting with uh, your child's guidance counselor in the next month, month and a half, two months or so. So that's another time to ask questions as well. But this is just to give you an overview before you have that meeting. So you have a sense of a, a bit more about the trajectory of the high school and the supports that we provide. So as I said, we're uh, the counseling department is joining us this evening. We're gonna talk about broadly the departments and what's offered in the high school, as well as an overview of the daily schedule because it is different than the middle school and then open it up for questions. So I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron Kind. Thanks, Ann. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's good to see uh, so many familiar names in these little black boxes. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, just on a programming note, uh, Ann mentioned the family meetings, which you could actually kind of see in that upper uh, um, right corner there um, of our eighth grade programming services. Those uh, appointment days and times are going out in the mail. Um, and you should be receiving them potentially at the end of this week, on the weekend or early next week. Uh, as some of you may know, the counseling department is in the process of moving to this beautiful, beautiful new space, which we are eternally grateful to the community for. Um, and, and with that, um, we are going to welcome the eighth graders in our office uh, for these meetings, uh, unfortunately, parents still can't be, uh, can't enter the building. But um, so we'll send you a Zoom link uh, as your date approaches, but you'll have it, you know, uh, you'll, you'll get a snail mail uh, about when that is, and we'll send you a Zoom link uh, as that approaches. So we're asking the students to come in person, and we will sort of figure out how to get three people on one call on two devices in a small space, or actually not in a small space, in a big space. But um, so we're gonna work on that um, for our first meeting. Um, I also wanna mention that just earlier today, uh, we presented the second presentation, as you can actually see in these classroom sessions up at the top, our second visit to advisory. So I would say two weeks ago, the counselors, shared with the advisors, the eighth grade advisors, um, some information that some of which you'll actually will be repeated here tonight um, about what they can expect for ninth grade on a sort of academic front courses that they have the option of taking um, some graduation requirement information and what have you. And then today we brought with us some juniors and seniors to talk about their experience in the high school um, and sort of some sort of tips and tricks and do's and don'ts and things to keep in mind and um, what they've enjoyed about high school, what they recommend eighth graders think about as they um, sort of move on to the next sort of wing of the, high, of this, of the building. Um, and that was recorded. I'm gonna share that with uh, Ms. Wendells, who's the eighth grade chair, and she's gonna push that out to all the students. I will um, also maybe give that to Anne to share with this recording, to share with all of you in case you wanna watch that. Um, so that's the logistical programming stuff. Um, what you see in front of you is, is really, again, like a bird's eye view of 
the services and structures that are in place for the high school counseling department. Um, these are really sort of like more of the calendared events, if you will, that we um, that we do for the different grade levels. Uh, for tonight, I'm really just going to focus on eighth and ninth grade. Um, but you can see as your child and as you as a family move through the grades, um, the sort of touch points become a little bit more and more leading into senior year. Um, as I sort of mentioned already for the eighth graders, we have this family meeting. Um, the counselors push into advisory, albeit virtually this year, um, twice, which we which we've done. Um, and, and we have this meeting here. So sorry, I've got the parent orientation, the family meetings a little bit switched there, but um, that's essentially what we do for the rising ninth graders. Um, again, who, you, who will be ha at that family meeting in terms of your, your child's counselor will be sent to you in, a, in an email, in a snail mail, and then followed up with a Zoom link for, for their meeting via Zoom. Um, for ninth grade, as Ann mentioned, uh, we have this picnic, which is also a, another ninth grade orientation and an activity fair. Uh, you'll hear a little bit more about the activity fair momentarily from Ms. Zelikoff, but that's really, we have a ninth grade orientation super early in the year, um, just to really kind of start the year off right for you as parents and to allow the students to sort of get to hear about what's uh, being offered in terms of extracurricular activities in the high school. Um, another program that is a long-standing program that under, underwent many changes this year, which Ms. H is going to talk about momentarily, is the Freshman Transition Program. Um, so I'm not going to speak too much to that, um, but that's, uh, in short, all the ninth graders are paired with senior leaders, and they continue to sort of work with them in a variety of shapes and fashions, uh, covering a variety of topics, both school related. So, you know, how to prepare for midterms or finals, and also uh, a lot of emphasis on social emotional learning. Um, the Sharp Reservation was a trip that was tied to the Freshman Transition Program, which we hope to get back to um, potentially in, in September, just like kind of a team building experience. I think uh, a, lot, a lot of the students have actually visited the reservation in, in previous years as um, potentially elementary or, or sixth grade students. Um, we see everybody every year, as you can see from these course planning meetings going down that column there. Uh, the ninth graders have their course planning meeting in March. Um, prior to that, we actually get together all the curriculum leaders in the high school. So each a teacher from each acad academic department to talk to the students about what courses are offered for, for the following year. And then the counselors follow that up with a family meeting. Um, and then finally, in terms of individual meetings, uh, I mentioned the family meeting, which uh, my screen's covering, but hopefully says March. Uh, it does. In addition to that, um, just actually this year, we've decided to add a second touch point of individual meetings, that being the first quarter. We felt like, especially given um, you know Zoom and the pandemic and how school sort of abruptly ended last year, we wanted to quickly sort of reintroduce ourselves to the ninth graders and make sure that they're, um, I guess at the time, making their, navigating their way through Zoom links, but really just feeling, um, feeling like they're acclimating, acclimating to high school life. Uh, so we will meet with the ninth graders uh, quickly in the first quarter um, and then follow that up with a second quarter touch base, uh, which actually kind of nicely leads into the March meeting where we talk about um, their courses for next year. That's the extent of eighth and ninth grade. And as you can see, as I mentioned, it it becomes a more frequent touch points in 10th grade. We, we tend to... Um, hold off on any sort of post high school conversations really until junior year. Um, that's when we like sort of formally start having these conversations with the grade at large. Having said that, um, you know, some of you out there um, and some of your students that are in eighth grade have been thinking about college already for quite some time and we reckon, recognize that. And so while well, the formal conversations happen more in the upperclassmen years, still as ninth graders, we're talking to them about their grades and extracurricular activities and 
consistency in the classroom and these sort of like foundational steps or, or foundational movements that they can make lead to sort of a college application process. And so we might not specifically give it verbiage like this is a college conversation, but talking about, um, you know, building on the success of ninth grade into 10th grade is sort of like a key component of applying to college. And so everything is sort of interweaved with just like a different lens at an earlier grade. Um, and then it becomes definitely more explicit um, as they they move into 10th and, and upperclassmen years. Um, I think with that, I will uh, ask if Anne can turn the slide. Thank you. And, and Ms. H is I'm gonna talk to you about the freshman transition program. Hi, everyone. Good to see you again. Um... I have been happy and honored to have been asked to kind of continue the freshman transition. Um, Anna Batacola and I worked closely together over the summer and the beginning of the year to really flesh out the plan for this year's freshman transition because it was so different of a school year, as you can imagine, with COVID. I also co-run freshman transition with Dr. Bill Meyer, Dr. Tom Viviano, and Mr. Kind, of course, as well as the other counselors will We'll all pitch in. So this year, freshman transition was fully online. We're not sure what it's going to be like next year. I'm hoping to do some in person. Um, this year, we really started off doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with seniors paired with a two or three freshmen where they would text, they would Zoom. In some cases, they would meet socially distanced in person, perhaps going to lunch or something like that. And then in November, we went with the more traditional model of incorporating everyone into small groups with a larger group of freshmen and seniors together. Those meetings were all held on Zoom on a wide variety of topics, such as space and time, mindfulness, as you can see on the screen, um, study skills. So the seniors were acting as mentors, giving the ninth graders some advice on what they recommend, how they've been handling Zoom and all of that. And we hosted trainings for the seniors on these topics. Later on in the year, we've kind of transitioned, so to speak, to a speaker series kind of model where we've paired with different organizations at Bronxville High School that approached us and said, hey, we want to coordinate with Freshman Transition and run an event. So for example, our latest event, um, we paired with the Social Issues Awareness Club at Bronxville and we co-hosted Kevin Hines who spoke about mental health to the ninth graders, the seniors, and to um, the Social Issues Awareness Club, and through the Freshman Transition Program, the groups were able to meet since they kind of have formed little relationships in these groups, and they were able to have debrief conversations about the talk and kind of share that experience together. So all in all, it has been quite an interesting year for Freshman Transition. I'm looking forward to continuing to build upon the program next year and continue a similar model in the sense of running the small groups, building those relationships, and then having those shared experiences. Awesome. Um, nice to meet you virtually. Um, I am Alyssa Zelikoff. I'm one of the new counselors in the counseling department this year. Um, it's always fun to see similar last names from some of my students from this year, um, some continuations with some of the families. So looking forward to an amazing year ahead next year. Um, so I sort of have the opportunity to talk to you all about the activities fair. Um, so as sort of a kickoff to the school year, we host a ninth grade picnic, which is a welcome to high school program for ninth grade families. Um, and at this event, we divide up the students from the parents so that each group gets a unique perspective of the high school. Uh, the parents attend sort of like a what to expect when your child goes to high school presentation and the students go to an activities fair. 
And this is really an amazing opportunity for students to learn about the different clubs and activities that they can get involved in at the high school. And so as Mr. Kine mentioned, we heard today from some juniors and seniors in eighth grade advisory on how meaningful their extracurricular experiences have been at the high school. Um, and the eighth graders today were able to ask them some questions. So it was an, it was an awesome session. Uh, so really this orientation event is always a success. It's a great opportunity for students to meet one another at the beginning of the school year. And we welcome students always to share with us afterwards what activities they were excited about um, after they see all their different options at the fair. So it's a great way to start the school year. Hi everyone, I'm Ellen Cohen. I am one of the other counselors in the high school and it's so nice to see everyone tonight. Thank you for coming. Um, I am here to talk about the very exciting New York State diploma requirements that um, all New York State public school students um, must complete for graduation. Um, so just a quick rundown. Um, you could Google this if you want to see it again. <laughs> the New York State ha has specific credit requirements for uh, graduation from a New York State public school. Um, each full year course that meets full time is worth one credit. So for English, students are expected to take English for all four years. Um, math, so that's four credits. Math is three credits. Um, science, three credits, social studies, four credits, so all year foreign languages, one credit. Um, health is an elective class that's half a year long that is a very common ninth grade choice, so some of you will be coming up in, to requesting that in your meeting shortly. Um, one credit in the art, music, or theater family of a full year foundational course in the arts. Um, PE, you take every semester that you are with us. Um, to get those credits to graduate. And th that's worth um, a quarter credit per semester, half a credit per year, which gives you a total of two credits. Um, and then, sorry, um, the electives of, as three and a half credits. The typical Bronxville student, and I would, I would almost say, Every Bronxville student will, will go far, far beyond these requirements in what they take. The way our schedule is built, it gives students opportunity to take not only major subject classes, but also electives. And we have, if you have a chance um, to go onto the Bronxville School Course Catalog to see the myriad of electives that we offer. We have some exciting electives for ninth graders and then even more for 10th graders and come 11th and 12th, there is a huge range of, of uh, electives in many different disciplines that almost any student will find something that will be exciting to them. So I really, um, you know, it's something that I really, that all the counselors really enjoy is helping students kind of craft their schedule based on their interests. Um, the New York State Regents requirements also include um, the New York State Regents exams, which are state developed um, tests that we use as final exams um, or midterms for certain courses. The English Regents is given in uh, January of 11th grade. Math is given at the end of Algebra 1 and different students finish Algebra 1 at different points. So some might even take it in eighth grade, some will take it in ninth grade, some might even take it later than that. It's all, you know, what's right for the student and their pace. Science uh, varies, but it's usually in 11th grade um, at the end of a level two, or sometimes students take our AP level sciences. The world history regions, which is at the end of the two year ninth and 10th grade world history sequence at the end of 10th grade and the US history regions, which is given in 11th grade. Great. Um, so now that some of the technical stuff is out of the way, we can uh, sort of double click into uh, sort of what you can expect from each academic class. Uh, what you see in front of you is sort of like a sample schedule of a high school student, specifically a ninth grade student. Um, and probably the biggest difference is going to be the time that you see going down the left column, um, all major academic courses, world language, math, English, science, history, and in this student's uh, 
case orchestra, which is their their music uh, class, they, that a uh, credit that uh, Ms. Cohen just spoke about, all meet for 80 minutes every other day. Um, so unlike middle school, everything doesn't meet every day. So at the end of day one, you know, I all have attended in this student's schedule, essentially two of my core academic courses. Um, health, as you can see, is in this student's schedule, which, as Ms. Cohen mentioned, is a graduation requirement. Um, and, and orchestra is obviously in the student schedule. So at the end of any odd day of the cycle, I most likely will only have homework from two classes, that being world language and math. And what we suggested to the eighth graders and will suggest again when they become ninth graders um, and what the juniors and seniors suggested to the eighth graders earlier today is that they do that world language and math homework the day that it's assigned. And what that allows them to do is, um, you know, one, have another day uh, or another evening in the event that um, they can't get it all done in one night, although that shouldn't be the case, but um, they have another evening to get the work done. But they also have that second day of the cycle to go into to extra help. Our extra help um, meets in the morning, as you can see, 745 to 830. Every teacher has extra help. Every teacher has extra help every day. And it's kind of, uh, you know, um, putting kind of COVID to the side here. It's it's open doors. Um, so, so we strongly encourage students to attend those extra help sessions, whether it be for uh, questions about homework, questions about tests. Extra help is now in person. Uh, yes, uh, it was over Zoom at the start of the year, but uh, now that we are fully in person, it is fully in person. Um, and as Anne mentioned, uh, we hope to continue it that way uh, for, for next year. Um, this is again, and, and the, the juniors and seniors today spoke about this. This is probably the biggest change for, for the eighth graders, the, um, the length of time. Um, I said this, if you were at the earlier meeting, it takes them about a week to figure this out and sort of adapt to the, the longer blocks of class. And then it's, it's as if um, it should have been this way the whole time. You know, it allows teachers also to break up you know, the direct instruction mixed in with, you know, group work mixed in with maybe some like, you know, gamification through Kahoot or, or, or some type of interactive um, slide presentations that they're able to do. So it really, um, the teachers actually really like it as well. Um, and I can speak firsthand when I entered Bronxville, I came with a, a colleague from a former school and we both kind of looked at each other like, wow, 80 minutes is a long time. We came from a place where it was, you know, 46 minutes, first period through seventh period, every academic class. And if, um, you know, when I talk to that teacher now, he's like, this is the way it should be. So um, Bronxville is way ahead of the curve on this front. Um, and I think I'm getting like the uh, Oscar sort of signal to, to wrap this up. So I'm gonna, gonna do that and let Ann sort of talk more about the academic, uh, the details for each course. But, um, you know, know that um, the, the, the ninth graders um, overwhelmingly quickly find that high school is, um, you know, what they, what, what do they refer to? It's just much better than eighth grade. And, and I don't think that's uh, a knock to, to eighth grade per se. I think they just really appreciate the schedule, the flexibility that it gives them. Uh, you saw, if we could go back for one second, maybe that we have an extended lunch period with, with an open door policy for all grades that they're able to go into town and come back or go home and come back. And they really like the freedom that we give them, um, again, starting yes. with ninth grade. Um, and with that, Ann, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you take over. Thanks. I'm not sure what just got pulled up, but do you just see the slideshow, Aaron? I still see the slides. It looks like your browser might've gotten minimized. Okay, here we go. Um, so just to answer what came into the chat just now, we have about approximately on average 20 to 20, 19 to 20 students per class in the high school. That does vary though. There's a lot more variation in the high school and we're gonna start just quickly. I'm gonna go through some of what's offered by each department. 
This is not a time where we're going to go through every course, but just give you a sense of the range of options that open up in high school. Math is uh, where your child is now and how they're doing is, is basically going to determine where they go next year. There's sort of a trajectory over the four years of high school with a range of possible courses that students might end up in by senior year. We also actually have some electives in the math department. We offer an intro to Java programming semester course. We offer AP Computer Science A. We offer AP Computer Science Principles. AP Computer Science A is a Java-based course. AP Computer Science Principles is an app development course. And then we also offer AP Statistics in addition to our AP Calculus AB and BC. Um, and you can see we also have a non-AP Calculus that we offer. I'll just say in general that it, it, as a school our size, um, we have a lot of options for students. And this is just one example in the math department. As we look at the science department, the science department has a unique, uh, something called the core that majority of students take in ninth and 10th grade. We have a semester each of chemistry and physics in ninth grade, and then bio and earth science in 10th grade. Um, that allows all students to get exposed to all four sciences. I'm actually a former science teacher from the Bronxville High School Science Department and I've taught a number of these courses. The core is a phenomenal program. Um, so students can really get a sense of what area of science they might be interested in before moving on to a more advanced course. We offer what are called level two courses, which are essentially regents courses, courses that cover the, the New York State Regents curriculum and end in a regents. And then we also offer a number of AP courses. So AP Chemistry, Biology, Environmental Science, AP Physics 1 and 2. We offer non-AP com Computational Physics. It does a lot of actually programming along with um, programming to, to uh, develop uh, representations of physical concepts. Um, we offer on a rotating basis a non-AP Environmental Science and Forensic Science. And then we have additional electives Introduction to Engineering, Bronx River Research. We have an intro to robotics that we just started this year, a competitive robotics we just started this year, as well as Entrepreneurship 1 and Entrepreneurship 2, which are also new this year. All of those are being offered in the brand new Design and Innovation Center um, that the Bronxville Foundation funded. So again, really uh, phenomenal offerings here in the Science Department. As Mr. Kind indicated and, and Ms. Cohen, ninth graders have somewhat of a more prescribed schedule, um, including some requirements. And as a student moves through high school, their schedule opens up and they can begin to pursue areas of interest. And we've tried to create a variety of options for them as they find things they're interested in and want to learn more about. And that's where we have all these electives. Um, if we take a look at the English department, this is where you know four years of English is required by New York State. Um, so we have a variety in ninth and 10th, we do ninth grade introduction to themes, students read books about the hero's journey, sort of the journey of the self. 10th grade moves into more, um, how does an individual function within society? And then in 11th grade, students can take either American literature, which is English 11, or an AP. It's called AP English Language. It's sort of a rhetoric and nonfiction course. Um, English 12, we offer an English 12 course, which has a variety of components um, to keep our seniors engaged throughout the year, particularly second semester, which we're in right now and is becoming a bit of a challenge as students get accepted into colleges. Um, also in 10th grade, students have the option of taking AP English literature. We also have a speech and debate elective in the English department. That is something that some ninth graders do decide to take. It's a great course as well to help students hone their public speaking. Social studies is another department where four years is required for graduation. Ninth and 10th grade is fairly prescribed. Although in 10th grade, we do offer AP World History in exchange um, for, a, for World History too. 11th grade is our US history year. Students can choose from regular US or AP. 
And in 12th grade, um, New York State requires a semester of economics and a semester of political science or we offer um, in exchange for that AP economics, which covers those two content areas. We have a number of electives in social studies, introduction to psychology, business management, Bronco TV, a humanities research seminar. Again, these are things students will tend to take junior or senior year, although there are some options earlier on to take them if they fit in the schedule. World language, most students will continue with the world language they're taking right now in middle school, but there is the opportunity to change world languages. Um, we offer French, Latin, Spanish, and we do offer Mandarin. The Mandarin course is offered through a collaboration with a regional um, organization in New York State. So that teacher is actually not in the building. Um, so even prior to the pandemic, students were interacting through technology with that teacher. Um, and that's just because we really don't have enough students to sustain a full-time Mandarin teacher, but we were able to contract to offer this to expand what's possible for our students. And there's a couple of electives in world language as well, philosophy, as well as mythology. Performing arts, lots of options. Some students choose to continue in orchestra, band, or chorus. We also have electives. We have a semester acting, semester directing, I mentioned speech and debate. Just to note, if you remember from Ellen Cohen's slide about New York State graduation requirements, students are required to fulfill one year in the performing arts. Acting and directing does fulfill that year. Um, sorry, not just the performing arts, the arts. So some students in ninth grade who want to get some of these requirements out of the way may decide to take studio art for the year. Other students may decide to take acting and directing. Some students may think, I'm gonna take speech and debate this year and later in high school, I'm gonna take another semester like acting. So these are things where, you know, students are, ninth grade is a good time to get some of these requirements out of the way to open up your schedule as you move forward. I'm gonna be honest, we do have some second semester seniors in health right now, which is a graduation requirement. I don't recommend waiting till second semester senior year to take health, but sometimes it does happen. And again, you know, um, I'm really proud of all of the options we offer our students in the relatively small school. We have a phenomenal fine arts department, similar to our performing arts department. We offer Studio Art One all the way up through AP Studio Art. For our artists, it's a tremendous program. We also offer AP Art History. Um, we offer some semester electives, digital photography, ceramics, and computers and art. These are also part of that um, one credit requirement that a student would need to fulfill to graduate. So this is where your, the guidance counselor is going to help you determine, you know, what are your in, what is your child's interests, what's going to fulfill those requirements, and just you know, get those to help fit in the schedule as um, they move through high school. So that's really an overview of um, all of our departments in the high school and, you know, just a broad brush stroke of all the options that students have in terms of um, what they might be interested in pursuing over the course of their high school career. And what I would just say is uh, I wouldn't expect not necessarily an incoming ninth grader to know exactly what this might look like um, later in high school. Ninth grade is a great time to try one or two things, um, but there's a lot of time throughout high school to, to try a variety of options. And um, I think, you know, your guidance counselor is going to help you through that process. So what are the limits? This is a question from the chat. Um, how will sort of students be limited in sophomore year based on what they choose in ninth grade and so forth? Ninth grade is really foundational year. Nothing necessarily is gonna limit you based on ninth grade. There's a couple things I would say you wanna take note of. If your child is a fantastic artist and is looking to get to AP Studio Art by senior year, they do need to start taking Studio Art One generally in ninth grade, because you end up needing to do four years of art to get through to AP Art. Other than that, 
really um, things open up over the course of high school and there's not um, necessarily a prerequisite of something in ninth grade in order to take 10th grade courses. Guidance counselors can also give you more specific information if you're thinking about particular courses or your child is to make sure that you leave your options open. At this point, happy to open it up to questions. You can raise your hand in Zoom or unmute yourself. Um, languages, great question. Languages, if you are in a current language in middle school, you would potentially move to level um, two, well, it's, it's level nine, Spanish nine, French nine, um, Latin two. And that trajectory would lead you all the way up through an AP language by senior year. If you switch languages coming into ninth, you will not end up in an AP language by senior year. You will end up in a level four. So that's just something to keep in mind. You would come in if you did middle school language into sort of the second year of language and you'd go two, three, four AP. But if you switch, you're going one, two, three, four. So that's something to think about. And again, discuss with the counselor. Um, Aaron, do you th can you think of anything other than the trajectory of languages? I mean, like I said, fine arts is like that, where you really, the four years are interconnected. Other than that, there's a lot of options to go in and out of an AP or back to a non-AP. Yeah, I would maybe just um, say math, maybe, uh, just because, you know, if you recall Anne's slide or maybe refer back to it when she sends them out, um, you know, uh, as long as you're staying on that path, it's it's going to be sequential and linear. Um, and I would say <laughs> students are staying on that path, uh, kind of similar to an earlier question in the chat, uh, via their performance in their current class. So as long as they're doing well would, and well generally means a B plus or better, then they're going to be recommended for the next sequential level of that course. If they're not getting a B plus or better, um, then they may be recommended to uh, change levels to drop down in theory uh, in math, which might, you know, kind of not get them to some type of endpoint that maybe you had in mind in the beginning. But um, someone just asked about doubling up in science. I'm so glad you asked that again as a former Bronxville High School science teacher. Um, some students who are extremely interested in science and doing very well in middle school choose to take um, two core sciences per semester their freshman year. So they take, say, chemistry and bio first semester and then physics and earth science second semester. That's called, um, <laughs> that's right, that's called uh, doubling up in science. Now, it is it is something that's possible. It's not something I particularly recommend, and I'll tell you why. Transition into ninth grade is a big shift for students, and um, it takes students time to adjust to high school. And it's important, we feel, for students to be very successful in ninth grade. That actually builds a lot of confidence going forward in high school. Um, and doubling in science can be a pretty stressful, difficult thing to do. Another thing I'll say specifically about content is that core bio assumes you have had core chemistry because of the biochemistry in bio requires you to understand chemistry. And we do not guarantee that in a child's schedule, they would have core chem the first semester if they're doubling up and core bio the second. So there are ninth graders who are doubling who might have core bio before they've taken core chem. That's even more difficult. Um, again, there are students who do this, who do it successfully, who love science. What does that open up for you longer term? That potentially opens up the possibility that in 10th grade, if you loved chemistry, you could take AP Chem and take additional APs later in high school. As a science teacher, as a scientist, as someone who studied biochemistry in college, students have a long time in their educational career to take science courses. Ninth grade is not make or break. And sometimes 
it can be a little much for them in ninth to do that. So I would just chat with the guidance counselor about what their current study habits are like, what their time commitments are like, your child's, and, and really what the actual interest in science is. If you're just doubling up to double up, I'm not sure that's the right um, idea. You can, actually can't, go ahead, Aaron. Uh, no, I didn't want to cut you off, please. You were nope. gonna talk about 10th grade. Okay, I, I just, um, we get this question every year. So I just, uh, there are 135 ninth graders, I think, give or take uh, in, in the school this year. There are seven students, seven, I counted, that are doubling up on science. Um, I can share a few different anecdotes, but the one I will pick will be the student, one of my students who is doubling up on science, who is also involved in some fall sports that I guess played this year, whose mother said that they didn't see her very often uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, meaning between school and sports and studying, there wasn't much time to, to do much else, uh, particularly because they were taking, you know, this, this double science uh, path. Um, so I think to Anne's point, um, you know, you, you can't win a marathon in the first mile. Um, and so I don't, you know, it's really hard to, 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 justify doing this sequence of, of courses. Um, it's We had the seniors and juniors speak to the eighth graders about just this earlier today. Um, again, I think the fact that there's just seven ninth graders doing that this year sort of speaks volumes about the the, the difficulty, the, the, the sort of um, fact that not many of them actually really want to take on this endeavor, which is quite the mountain to climb. I do want to mention because of the chat question that you can double up in language, you could add Latin in ninth grade and end up doubling in language through through a high school. That is definitely an option. And finally, I'll just say in relation to doubling in science, it pretty much fills your entire schedule. It sort of pushes you out of other things. And I would just say it may be worth your child thinking about something they haven't had the chance of taking, like intro to robotics or um, entrepreneurship or Bronco TV, where they're going to develop, you know, a news uh, cast each week, just as something that wouldn't have been an option that they may be interested in and if they find out early on in high school they can really pursue and dig into over the course of high school so that's another thing to think about going into ninth um, someone asked about gpa how the year nine gpa or performance in ninth grade impacts college admissions so i'll leave that to aaron okay thanks um yeah so um you know the Everything, you know, as as you all know, uh, it's like kind of everything matters in high school, right? It, it's it's kind of like the big leagues. Um, the students' GPA in ninth grade is not as important as it is in tenth, and not as important as it is in eleventh. But that ninth grade GPA sets some type of foundation, whether it be high, medium, or low. Um, it it does provide some type of starting point for the next few years in terms of collective average. Um, essentially what colleges are looking for uh, amongst other things is, is either one consistency. So consistency in grades, uh, consistency in extracurricular activities, just consistency across the board. Uh, another thing that colleges are very much looking to see uh, for students that this might be more appropriate for is growth. So uh, what I mean by that is if a student doesn't do very well in ninth grade, but over time, 10th and 11th grade, improves on their average uh, that very much shows up very clearly in their in their high school transcript which obviously gets sent to college and that's something that uh, very much should be celebrated just on a personal level but will also be acknowledged and um, you know sort of taken into consideration when they go to apply to college but I will say this you know nobody gets in to college in ninth grade um, 
you can double up in science in ninth grade and not get into whatever school you have in mind, or you could get into whatever school you have in mind. There are so many factors, so, so many factors that go into somebody, um, you know, getting an email with confetti or not getting an email with confetti um, that whether or not they double up in science is not necessarily one of them. Uh, their ninth grade GPA um, is not going to be a make or break. Um, and so I just, you know, again, you, you have to think about this as a marathon um, and, and you want to start that race, you know, kind of like, um, I'm not a runner, but I would, you know, you want to start that race hitting your mile times at like a consistent pace that you're comfortable with. I think that's, that's the kind of gist my wife tells me after running marathons. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I just want to acknowledge that at 750, we're happy to keep ask, answering questions. Anyone who still has them can stay on. Um, but anybody else is, is welcome to leave. We won't be offended. Um, and of course, don't hesitate to reach out to any of the counselors or myself with any questions that maybe come to mind after this. So thank you for joining us and we will stay on if anyone wants to stay on to ask questions. Extracurricular conversations will be, uh, extracurriculars will be shared by counselors, but that mostly gets shared um, at the activities fair at the very beginning, the first week of school in ninth grade where our high school students share all the awesome clubs they have. We have over 30 in the high school and they invite any ninth graders to sign up for them. And we highly encourage ninth graders to sign up for a bunch, knowing that they probably won't stay in a bunch, but they can try them out. So that's something that actually kind of happens as students start ninth grade. Happy to answer anything else. Give people another minute. There's a question in the chat about a club list. Um, I don't know if you maybe could share that just when you share this recording. Um, yes, I will be honest that this year the club list is a little bit different because of COVID. Not all clubs are meeting. Um, so this year's list isn't quite as extensive as it probably will be next year. I think but, actually on our high school website, it has a club list. Does it have last year's? It probably does. Yeah. yeah on the high school website. Um, elective courses can be a mix of ninth through 12th graders. A lot of them are, um, which is actually a nice experience for the ninth graders. Some are more ninth grade electives. Health is mostly ninth graders. It's not an elective. It's a graduation requirement. Um, Studio Art 1, which is technically an elective, is mostly ninth graders, but there could be 10th, 11th, or 12th graders in there. So it does vary. Classes like band, chorus, and orchestra will definitely have students in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Um, hi, good evening. I have a question. Sure. First, thank you for such a great presentation. Um, it was very, very helpful. I'm from Argentina, and so is my husband. So we didn't go to school here. Um, it is extremely overwhelming, even with a, a great presentation. Um, for me, everything's new. Uh, regions, like, I don't, we don't know anything about all this. Who would be the person to reach out to? I'm gonna watch the video over and over again. No, and don't. take notes. Don't, don't, this is not, all of this information is not for you to manage. Your, the guidance counselor is going to help figure out what classes your child's going to take. The teacher of that class is going to know if they need to take a regents. We're going to schedule them for that. All of those things will be taken care of in their courses with their counselor. This is to give you the overview, but you do not need to worry that you're in charge of those things. We're in charge of those things. Right, right. We're, so yeah, for some of those things, you're not going to need to worry. You'll, your child will get the credits they need. We'll make sure they have their graduation requirements. The regents will be taken care of. But so those are things you don't have to worry so much about. Okay. And if I have, thank you. Thank you. And if I have questions um, when it comes, for example, to the languages or any other, who would be the person to, to reach out to? The counselor? Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. 
Um, someone asked how much involvement should the parent have in choosing the student courses and electives? That's probably somewhat of a family decision. Different families, I think, function differently in that way, but the guidance counselor can definitely help guide you through that process. Um, Aaron, the question yeah, of- the, Yeah, I would it, um, it's about what, every counselor has about 125 students on their caseload. So one to 125, which is, well below the national average, but also um, definitely below the sort of Westchester average, which I don't know offhand, but I do know just given the size of our school. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily disagree, but I, I came from, you know, New York City where I had 300 students. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, you will see that the attention to your, you and your child and the level of detail in which your child's counselor gets to know your student, um, you will be very pleased, not just in ninth grade, but definitely by the time they walk across the stage um, in 2025. Because the counselor will be with you and your family for all four years. Um, regular dialogue with the student, you know, like Mr. Kind said, ninth grade, there are regular check-ins. Um, listen, if your child is having an issue, they can absolutely reach out to their counselor. Um, if you have a concern, you can reach out to the counselor, but the counselor will also be reaching out to your child. And then we have regular meetings in the high school by grade level with all the teachers of that grade level to see who are people concerned about. And then oftentimes the counselor will coordinate with those teachers to reach out, to reach out to you, to your child or what have you, so that no one's getting lost um, in the process. All right, well, thank you everyone. We um, appreciate you coming. We will send out this video. We will include the slides in it. And again, please reach out with any questions that come up. And I know the counselors are looking forward to meeting you. Thank you. Night, everyone.